Hi, this is Gabe Betts Hogan with the Rideshare Guy, and I got something really special for you today. I'm sitting in a 2021 Ford Mustang Mach-E electric vehicle, and I'm gonna show you what it's like to drive a Ford Mustang Mach-E for Rideshare. All right, so what is the Ford Mustang Mach-E? Uh, well, first off, is it really a Mustang? I don't think it is. It's four-door uh, crossover utility vehicle, and Ford, I guess is trying to leverage a very well-known and very liked brand to uh, use on their electric car to kind of show the world how serious they're regarding their very first uh, long-range electric car. Uh, you know, as an Uber driver, you're gonna be mostly concerned with driving around town. This car is, despite its size, which is a little longer and a little higher and a little heavier than my Tesla Model 3, I quickly got used to it and it feels like, it feels very natural and very comfortable. You know, what I tell a lot of people and what I probably mentioned in the story is, um, Tesla is a technology company first and it's a technology company that happens to build cars. And their technology is better than their cars. Not that they're bad cars, I really like driving my Tesla. But when you get into a car like this, it's clear that when these legacy auto companies want to make a nice car that feels comfortable and has a really broad appeal to a lot of different kinds of drivers, they really know what they're doing. I mean, it's all they do and they do a great job. They did a great job with this car. My only complaint is that the springing, it's a little, it's a little squashy and a little uncontrolled on the damping. So you're, if you're going fast over uh, bumpy city streets and you know, San Francisco is kind of a, it's kind of an extreme use case. Now I want to talk about what it's like to be a passenger in this car. The passenger seats are so much better than a Tesla. So much easier to get and to actually get into the car once you figure out how to open the door. Hey, press the button on the outside. Where, where the hell are the handles? The problem with the doors is that the door latch on the outside is this weird little round circle and the passenger has to like it's like Hunger Games where the passenger has to figure out, oh, what do I do? Sometimes they just give up and they kind of bang on the door and then I have to like roll the window down and explain it to them, which gets old. But once they're in the car, boy, no complaints. First time in this spaceships, impressive, <laughs> spacious. Yeah. Yeah. You can stretch your legs. Lots of leg room. Um, soft, cushy seat, lots of hip room for multiple passengers back there. Uh, now here's the big test. Can you get out? <laughs> you gotta figure out the door. Here go. oh, How do you open this thing? See? Right <laughs> Let's talk about the technology in this car. And it is bristling with it. Like one thing that where it just stands head and shoulders above the rest is, is uh, Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. Elon, Elon, if you're watching this, and I love you, babe. Uh, we all love you, but can you please drop the beef with Apple and Google and please, please put Apple CarPlay. I have not had Apple CarPlay for like six months. And when I got back into this car and hooked up my, my phone wirelessly, by the way, might I add, and it's got a wireless uh, charger too for your phone. So you just, you just drop your phone there and once the phone's paired and it was really easy to figure out how to pair the phone, it was just so easy to set up CarPlay and then it reminded me of how nice CarPlay is and how much I like CarPlay. Uh, it's so easy to use, it's so easy to navigate and if you're an Uber driver or a Lyft driver, you'll really appreciate how when you go to external nav, it opens up a nice, clear Google or Apple Maps on your on this giant display here. Now, talking about that display, the image quality is beautiful, and the um, and the response time is better than my Model Three, and that's a shame because I have a 2022 Model Three, and the response time on that tablet it's not great. So kudos to Ford for making a really nice, a really nice setup and really thinking through everything. He needs games. <laughs> you don't like the drawing pad? That's not enough? Yeah, it's definitely not enough. The Ford Pass is an app that you put on your phone and you can connect the car to the app, just like the Tesla app or other apps um, that lets you use your phone as a key so you don't have to carry your fob around. 
Um, it also gives you access to what they call the Ford Pass charging network. And that gives you access to all these different charging networks like Electrify America and EVgo and Charge Plus and Charge Point. Uh, it puts them all together so that just like uh, with Tesla, you just walk up to the charger, you plug it in, and it automatically communicates with your phone and the car and the charger so that it just charges your, your card and you don't have to stand there talking to customer service for 10 minutes to get your car charged. The Maki -E has a very large frunk, which unlike other frunks can really hold a lot of stuff. There's even drain holes in it so that you can fill it with uh, ice and use it as a cooler or put your dead fish in there and hose it out or whatever it is you want to do with that much space. It'll also hold at least one regular size roller bag. And one nice thing about this frunk is that you can open it from the driver's compartment without using the app. The base model is called the Select. The 2022 Select starts at $44,000. You're gonna add $2,700 for the all-wheel drive and $6,000 for the extended battery, but you can only get the extended battery in the premium trim, which starts at $49,100. That means you're getting really close to about $58,000, $59,000 if you want the all-wheel drive with the extended range battery, but you're also going to get all the good stuff, the 19-inch uh, the wheels, a glass roof, heated rear seats and your steering wheel, upgraded sound system. Um, but on the other hand, the Select does have the same vegan leather upholstery. Um, that big touch screen and all of the active and passive safety features that the other versions get and available all-wheel drive. Um, and you also get to purchase some of the luxury features and add them to the select package. So I think the select package might be a pretty good value if you're happy with the regular range battery. All right, so the Ford Mach-E does have a pretty good charging system. You can charge this car very quickly. Uh, you can add about 100 miles of range in say 15 minutes. So that's pretty fast, but you're only gonna charge that quickly for a limited amount of time. As your battery gets more and more full, the charge rate is gonna slow down. So what that means is if you want to charge the battery to 80% from say 10%, it's gonna take you about 30 to 40 minutes at a level or what's called a DC fast charger. Um, but once you try to charge it more than 80% at the fast charger, it's gonna slow way down so that you might as well just take it home to your level two charger because you really should have a level two charger if you're gonna be buying an electric car. So I think the Mach-E is a good car for the right driver, someone who can charge at home on a level two charger and if you drive less than 350 miles a day. If you were doing ride share and you're going more than 350 miles a day, well, you've got other problems besides what electric vehicle you wanna pick out. But the bottom line about this car is that it is not as efficient as a smaller, lighter car like a Tesla Model 3 or a Chevy Bolt would be. Those cars average around between four, four and a half uh, miles per kilowatt hour and this car you know average driving if you're not like a hyper miler and being super careful and you're not running your climate control all right you are running your climate control you're probably going to get about 3.3 or 3 miles per kilowatt hour if not less especially when it's really cold out you might dip into the ones and uh, then you're going to see range of like 120 miles with this car so you have to be very careful about buying this car and thinking if it's going to fit your use case. Now, my use case is I always drive less than 200 miles in a day. I charge at home in my garage. I live in California with pretty mild weather and that means uh, I probably wouldn't have an issue with range, but you might, especially if you're the kind of Uber driver that believes that taking lots of long rides is your path to riches. Uh, hot tip, it's not. So would I buy this car? Uh, you know what? <laughs> the first time I got into this particular car, I don't know if you can hear it, but when you floor it in unbridled, it makes a sound. I actually went onto the Ford website and then I went on to Carvana. I think this car would be worth the wait and I really like it and I think you should check it out. Thanks very much for watching. Man, this is a nice car. Now I want one.